So yeah, um, Wood Food is a, it's a location-based uh, food finder. It's an app available on the, uh, the iPhone platform and now it's on the uh, uh, App Store as well. And uh, how Wood Food started was, uh, it's a, it was, a, it was a chance thing. We, I was driving back from work one day uh, in the PJ area and I passed by this uh, really popular uh, burger stall in SS2. Ramli Burger. Ramli Burger, uh, next to the uh, fire station. So I just thought to myself, like, how are people going to find out about this place uh, besides word of mouth? That guy doesn't do any marketing of his, his, of his own. And if I don't know any friends who've eaten there before, I'll never find this place. This is an awesome uh, food, uh, but I'll never get to taste it if I, you know, I, I, if nobody told me. So then I thought about uh, ways to discover food. And at the time, the options available, uh, online at least, were blogs. So blogs were the best way, um, food blogs especially. And uh, so this food had to appear on search engines when I searched Ramli Burger and SS2. And someone had to do a food review about that place. So if I managed to stumble upon the article, uh, I need to read through the whole article. Um, you know, which is at least a few paragraphs long, uh, goes through all the pictures and stuff. And then at the end, I'd probably get like a subjective review or at least a, a review that the reviewer wants to, to put across, whether it's good, delicious and stuff. But I, that to me was just the reviewer's opinion. Like I didn't get like a, a balanced opinion. It wasn't like a, you know, a user generated uh, comment or review kind of, uh, you know, mechanism built into it. And reading blog posts are, are, are you know, are, is, are tedious oftentimes. La. Depends on how the writing style is. La. Uh, when I'm hungry, I don't want to be reading a blog post, right? I want to find, you know, what's good to eat and what's good to eat nearby. So then, yeah, then a light bulb moment uh, appeared. So we thought, hey, why not build uh, a website? that uh, could allow people to search food based on their location. I mean, now Google Maps is, is so uh, widespread and with uh, geolocation and stuff, you could, you know, you could easily just get a radius and then just, you know, so recommend food. The mobile food mobility of the mobile phone today actually helped with some of this? Uh, well, <laughs> believe it or not, not at that time. Uh, uh, we actually this started... This was two years ago. This was two years ago. Uh, While well, I was still working. <laughs> uh, and at that time, uh, we didn't really think, well, the iPhone just was, was pretty new and uh, we didn't really think in terms of smartphone, right? But looking back, uh, we, we, we knew how we wanted the user to get that, to, that experience uh, in terms of discovery, in terms of food discovery, but uh, we didn't think of the medium. So we, knew, we went with what we knew best, which was uh, websites. So we started off building a website. Uh, like a traditional website, we built it in WordPress. <coughs> um, I did the design, and layouts, and stuff. And my partner coded the whole thing up, and then uh, we realized, hey, okay, people are not going to be behind the desktop browsing our website, and then they say, hey, this is a good thing to eat, and then go on and look for it, and then eat it, right? So uh, we learned from the experience, and, say, and then we we, we kind of pivoted and say, hey, we need to stop building a website and start building a mobile app. Uh, and something for the mobile, right? Because when you're on and about, and when you're hungry, uh, you're not gonna open up your browser and start keying the, the URL. You wanna have that instant experience uh, where everything works behind the background, gets your location, just tells you, okay, this is good to eat nearby. So yeah, uh, we, we built that about a year, about a year ago now. How many of you? Three of us. Okay. Yeah. And what would they, what would they do? What's the role? Well, it's really uh, clearly defined. Uh, me, uh, it's three, uh, well, we're, we're known as AlphaPod. AlphaPod is the company. And uh, the, I do, I handle the, the UX, the user experience, uh, the UI design. Uh, and I came out with the idea, originally. Um, and 
but I couldn't execute myself. So I worked with my very long uh, uh, friend, who's also my ex-colleague, who's uh, Clayton. So Clayton is the one who's uh, involved in the coding. Uh, everything tech, from everything from coding to server management, yeah, he's the guy. Um, and uh, and my, my wife, <laughs> Janice. So she's in, in charge of the, um, the, uh, the operations, the admin. Uh, there's also the finances, which is the most important thing at the start. Uh, we're very lucky because we, are the, uh, we were recipients of the MDAC pre-seed grant as well. So she helped us get us uh, that funding, which basically got the whole show running. Well. How long did it take for you guys to have that up, you know, uh, development, development cycle? Well, to start up, it's, it's really simple. <coughs> Uh, in fact, we, when we were waiting for approval or to, um, for funding, we actually restarted um, the started development work. Uh, so it's as, you know, it's as simple as working from our laptops and uh, uh, getting together and sharing ideas. Uh, coming up with uh, what was really, what took time at the beginning, I suppose, was the, the planning for the product in terms of features in terms of roadmap, uh, in terms of what we wanted to be like, you know, a year from where we started. Um, so that started off and, you know, we're here lot. But um, we've been taking longer than expected. Uh, it's just the three of us. Uh, so we learned things along the way. And uh, you know, we're here lot. We finally launched uh, last week. So we are a week old and we've been monitoring the, the downloads uh, every day. Yeah. yeah. What's the steps like? Uh, we've got about uh, 200 plus downloads in terms of uh, Malaysia. It's 99% Malaysia and 1% Singapore. Uh, right now we're open to the, uh, on the app store only to these two countries. Uh, why, why is that? Well, we wanted to test the market so-called because we had a very small pool of beta testers. And uh, only out of that, uh, we've got a few really feeding back in terms of good feedback. So we wanted to expand that so-called, you know, that test base, the test ground uh, larger by, you know, we couldn't wait, so we launched it live. Um, and, uh, you know, being a, a startup, naturally people are a bit more forgiving. Uh, we, we wanted to limit it to these two countries because uh, in terms of feature set, we're not really that yet, there yet, but we wanted to do, uh, you know, the basic stuff really, really well. And uh, we build in features where you know um, some of our competitors don't really have yet, uh, which is more localized, more localized features, um, especially in Asia. So um, we will probably be uh, a couple of versions of a couple of iterations ahead before we start opening up to the. So what do you get? Now? You get a website uh, that you can actually monitor your profile page, what you're checking, and stuff like that. Well, okay, right now I, I mentioned earlier about pivoting, right? So, uh, let's take a, uh, two steps back. We actually built the whole website with functionality, uh, really, really cool functionality. We built it in HTML5. We've got geolocation built in, we've got you know, the back end all running, and then we pivoted to the mobile app. So, and then we, once we got the mobile app uh, you know, halfway, we did. We, we thought. We thought. Hey, the website doesn't have to have the full functionalities of the app. I mean, with the limitations of um, technology, at least these days, you can't really get an accurate uh, location lock on your browser. So we stripped away all the functionalities of uh, the backend. We didn't throw them away, but we just, you know, took them out temporarily. And what we have is one, just the main web, uh, the landing page. Uh, on the website, which is a real-time feed of uh, everything which happens on the app. So everything, you know, people um, add content on the site, uh, they, uh, on, the, on the app, it appears on the site immediately. And what do you get on the app? Uh, we get uh, the... Do you want to show it? Or? Yeah, I know. I'll okay. Well, we... Basically, the, the core functionality, three things, uh, nearby, which is uh, the location of, well, it gets your location, it tells you, uh, it gives you a list of what's to, uh, good to eat nearby. So it's sorted by ratings uh, and then by distance. It's something like Foursquare, right? Uh, Foursquare gives you a list of locations, but this gives you 
place of food sorted by ratings uh, or popularity, if you if you must. Um, and then you can uh, the the second feature is the ad food. So through the app, we're building our database of uh, of content, so people can easily take a picture of the food, uh, give it a, a short description, and there's of course optional info like. Uh, category of food, price, uh, opening hours. But it's basically essentially three things. Um, name of the food, where it's located, uh, at the uh, location, and the name of the place. Do you have ratings and likes and stuff like that? Yeah, uh, which is optional. How about uh, sharing, social sharing? Yeah, uh, we've got integration with, uh, well, we've got the, the top three services, right? We've got for, uh, Facebook, we've got uh, Twitter, we've got uh, uh, Foursquare. So um, the user can basically just uh, connect using OAuth, uh, really simply clicking a button. Um, and when for, uh, Facebook Places comes out, we we are ready for integration immediately, lah. What about um, social gaming? Is that uh, a gaming perspective to what you're doing? Well, um, that's a very light game element. Um, uh, it's to encourage people to uh, to use the app as, as often as possible. Uh, we have uh, badges uh, which are very uh, similar to Foursquare. But that's very, very interesting because it uh, rewards you for very specific behavior. So things like uh, if you're a big fan of Chinese food, right, and you and we track your behavior, if you add lots of Chinese food or if you eat lots of Chinese food and you, you tell us uh, through the app, you get rewarded with a badge. Or if you are a fan of um, fusion food, we've got a badge for that as well. Or if it's, it, that's, that, that's the time of, uh, you get rewarded for types of cuisine, right? But you also get in terms of frequency. So if you norm for like, um, if you use the app for breakfast, lunch, and dinner within the same day, uh, that means you're, you're, you're an active user, we also reward in terms of that. So badges is one component and points is the other. So uh, we've got points to when every, every single activity, so you, the more you describe the food, the more information you attach to it, the more points you, you get uh, for that. Uh, and right now, it, the points are just bragging rights. And we, we find that um, there are a number of foodies who bother to put in you know, this kind of data just so that they can climb up the leaderboard. Like we've got a leaderboard up there. So um, it's, all, it's all in good fun. Uh, and later on, we'll be looking at translating those points and rewards into real life uh, stuff, but not, not quite yet. So, so let's let's go a bit on the social gaming thing, right? <laughs> okay. That, uh, no, so, uh, like Foursquare, they have uh, privileges and reward, real life rewards that can translate to discounts or free food. Uh, you know, when you do check in, you're gonna play the RV yeah. or you're gonna play the Foursquare. Yeah. Yeah. Is there something similar that we're sort of looking at? Or? Well, we don't want to <coughs> reinvent the wheel, so we we'll probably. I mean, it's possible to pull in Foursquare specials through the API, and we can display Foursquare uh, uh, special, uh, mayor specials, and whatever specials. So what you I mean is, we could offer it yeah. any of this uh, mayor, mayor ship specials at all, you know, batch specials. Um, you never know. <laughs> uh, we can we can develop functionality which is you know which is uh, you know what the retailers want, especially F and B retailers. Uh, specific activity like if they want if they're promoting a special a special dish right um, like a Chinese New Year or Christmas promotion um, and they want to or like Starbucks they've got a caramel thing during Christmas right and if they want to push it and they want to track it you can't do it through Foursquare uh, unless you do a shout out I mean, the functionality isn't built in yet but you can with, uh, with wood food so if you norm a norm is basically uh, a feature to tell the, the, the the app that you're eating that food right now. Um, if you norm the food, uh, then it can unlock certain things. Um, that can be built in, right? Uh, but we're still exploring at this stage. Nothing, nothing set in stone. Yeah. But what, we, what I'm trying to say is that we can be more specific when it comes to um, <coughs> the lowest common denominator. In this case, it's food. So right now, what would people get out of using the app and checking in and stuff like that? Well, uh, the main thing I think it's always been um, what we set up to do, which is uh, food discovery. And we've built a social element into it, um, meaning that uh, you, you get user-generated um, 
content. So I don't <coughs> have to rely on a, a single publisher, or I don't have to rely on you know like the books, right? Uh, which gets published every 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 once in a while. Um, what you have is real time data, uh, which is submitted by by, by people who, who use the app, and. Uh, <coughs> And eventually, this will be all people from all over the world who use our app. And anywhere I travel to, even if I'm in a foreign land, like for example, <coughs> recently I was in Bangkok. I was in a food court. Everything's in Thai. And this is with one of the motivations we started Wood Food as well. You know, be short of asking or speaking to a local Thai who knows the language. The first thing is that I've got to find, you know, that person. The second thing, that person has to speak English because I don't understand Thai. Um, I can get reviews from other people like me, so you know, travelers or even Malaysians who've been there before, uh, and they can explain to me that this, you know, this is point out that this stall or this place sells really good, you know, uh, Thai noodles or whatever, and based on pictures, <coughs> or location or name of the of the of the stall, maybe you know, uh, I can locate it easily, and I don't have to speak when I'm ordering. I can just say, hey. I want one of these, you know. So value in terms of food discovery, um, in terms of local, in terms of um, I'm walking in a, in a mall, um, what's near me, near, nearby, or when I'm traveling. So that's uh, that's probably the best thing. And also things like um, <coughs> when I plan, when we plan for holidays, uh, especially in, ho in in family holidays, uh, we often find ourselves. Uh, especially in backpackers' places, we 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 get the uh, we get a few uh, addresses, uh, possible venues to stay. We get the address and then we cut and paste it into uh, Google Maps, and then we see what what a good whether there are any nice restaurants around there or, or and what what you know good things to eat right because you know, you're out for the whole day you come back you want to eat and you do not want to know recommendations <laughs> exactly yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean this thing, this things are you know it's 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 important to us, and I, I think it's important to a lot of people as well. I'm sure there are a lot more features that will come out uh, in the future, and, uh, and definitely a lot more people in terms of you know uh, whatever we're gonna look at. Yeah, uh, I'm we gonna share some of them. Okay. <coughs> We've got a few things. Um, uh, the first thing is really uh, what we're working on is a news feed. So, um, like I mentioned earlier, the social element, right? So right now you're getting a lot of uh, recommend. Um, you get you see lots of content added by people, but what you see upfront is food. Uh, what we want to do is uh, to surface that social layer upfront even. So you've got an option. You want to see food first, or you want to see your friends first. So when it comes to friends, you want to know what they're eating, right, or what they just discovered. And um, so, if you imagine um, Instagram feed, or if you imagine your Facebook news feed, right? It's about your friends' activities. Um, and Wood Food Naturally being about food, you want to know, it's all about um, what, uh, what's happening with the friends in terms of food, what they're eating, uh, or where they're meeting up. And food is inherently social, you know? Not many people eat alone. And it's fun eating in, with a friend or in groups, right? Or you have tweet ups, or you have meet ups, or you know appointments where centered around food. So a lunch appointment, or dinner appointment, or yam cha, mama, right? So what we can do in the future uh, is probably to organize to get people to probably use leverage on the Facebook uh, graph to actually uh, hook up friends, uh, activities surrounding food. So it can be food, or it can be location. So that's that's one thing. Uh, the the second thing, which is um, I have to mention, is also um, uh, it's it's localized uh, features. Things like I mentioned earlier, the burger stall beside the the the, the, uh, the yeah, the, it's a street side stall um, beside the fire station. And you know, in Asia, street food culture is really really predominant. Um, and a lot of times, there are you know stalls or, or places where there's no signboard, right? Or it's known as bakute, playing bakute under the bridge kind of thing, you know? And that's, that's got a cult following. Um, sometimes people don't know the name of the place. So if a review is done, um, a blog post, which is the actual name, people might not know that's that place. 
Um, so we built this function. We can build functionality around landmarks. So if I'm near a place, access to, or if I'm near a specific building, I know what's nearby. So things like opposite this building, inside the building, um, nearby, um, uh, you know, um, relative location. What is is a function we, we call it. Um, so instead of you know, a chicken rice at a restaurant, it can be, you know, food nearby some place. Uh, and it's of course been pointed on Google Maps, law. But we use a, a relative location, which is a landmark, to to. Yeah. I mean, it's been one week old. Uh, what's the most used feature, or what what have people requesting for features as well? Yeah. We've got uh, we've got at the uh, private beta stage, we've got a lot of features in terms of uh, feature requests, in terms of uh, little 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 tweaks. Uh, our core functionality is pretty is pretty there, pretty spot on. But things like you know, hey, why can't I you know um, like or add food while I'm away? You know, when I'm away from the location, uh, we're trying to balance things because we, we notice that people when they eat, <coughs> they don't um, you know. Well, some of them do. They like, say, okay, don't eat. I want to take pictures of your food, right? And then I'm there adding food. But then it's like also at the same time when you're adding food, your food's getting cold. So we find people actually taking photos and then saving it for later, eating the food first, and then um, adding the food later. But sometimes they forget about it and then they realize, oh, when, uh, when only uh, when they are at home or when they're back in the office. So um, we, we actually limit in terms of um, uh, the radius. So if you're far away from that place, you can't actually uh, tie that food back to the place because you're too far away from it. But we're trying to find a it's a it's a it's a balance because we don't want people to be in Malaysia and adding food in Thailand. It, it, it prevents the cheating. Problem. Yeah, it, it prevents cheating. Um, but it's a fine bal it's a fine line. So we're trying. It's it's a matter of of uh, distance. Um, and also, I think uh, the earlier behavior of uh, eating food first and then adding it later is it's fine. It's, it's it's great in fact because then. You get a more objective review. You know the food whether it tastes you good or not. The anti-social part of the exactly, and that as well. So yeah, and the food is social, and then it turns to something anti-social. So uh, we want to be as discreet as possible. You know, we don't want to take away from that experience of enjoying a food. But uh, we feel that you know, if it's if the food is good enough, if if it warrants sharing, telling people about it, uh, you should use wood food, right? To do that. Right. Right. We think it's the best way to do it.